All right, welcome to our fifth and final episode from Chapter 2B. And in this episode, we're going to cover lipids. Uh, lipids are somewhat similar to carbohydrates, and they are the second of the four biomolecules. So let's get into it. What is a lipid? Well, lipids are almost just like a carbohydrate in the fact that they're made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But unlike a carbohydrate, they are not, and I want to stress right here, not, not a one to two to one ratio. I mean, it could be something like, you know, maybe there's 10 and then there would be 35 of these and there might be only two of those. So not anywhere near uh, the one to, two, one to two to one ratio that you would find in a carbohydrate. Uh, what kind of substances are lipids? Well, you're gonna be familiar with a lot of these. Fats are lipids, so are oils. These two are, are close cousins. Uh, the waxes, and the one that we hear in the news a lot uh, through the sports world, are steroids. Uh, you know, recently this summer we had two major league baseball players receive a 50-game suspension for using steroids. All right, so uh, kind of common in sports, unfortunately. Now, one of the other key features of uh, lipids is that they are not soluble in water. Now, soluble is a word that simply means having the ability to dissolve. So these guys will not dissolve in water. And it's because they're all nonpolar. So nonpolar things will not dissolve in water. And we, we've all seen oil and water, they just can't mix. Right? It's, just, it's just not possible because the oil is nonpolar and the water would be polar. Now, the one weird thing about lipids, and this is the only, of, the only one of the four biomolecules that's like this, they don't really have a real monomer. The closest thing to a monomer, especially in oils and fats, would be the fatty acid. That's the closest thing. And we're going to talk about those a little bit more in detail here in just a little bit. Now, most fats and oils are in the form of a triglyceride. Okay, triglyceride. Now, the tri refers to three fatty acids. So three of these fatty acids are going to be in there. And then the, glycerol, the glyceride part refers to a molecule called glycerol. You see this OL here? That means that glycerol is from a family of uh, chemicals called alcohols. And the predominant functional group in these guys is the OH group, the hydroxyl group, that we talked about in a couple of screencasts earlier. Here is a picture of a triglyceride. So what we have right here We'll write this right there, triglyceride. And remember the tri part refers to in this whole chain here, that's one fatty acid. This one there, that's the second. And then obviously right here is going to be the third one. This stuff in yellow, that's the glycerol molecule and that's the part that comes from the glyceride. Can you see this bond that's in red right in here? This bond was made by dehydrase and synthesis. And remember the uh, cousin name for that, or another name that's, a, we'll say a synonym for dehydrase and synthesis is polymerization. There'll be an A in there, okay? So there's an A right there. I just wrote it too small. All right, and this is a storage area for energy. So remember, any new bond is stored energy. All right. Okay, let me give you a little bit more detail into a fatty acid. Fatty acid is going to have an acid group in it. And so let me draw a fatty acid here. We'll just put a couple of carbons in it. So this stuff in red is the carbon chain. And every place I put a little dash here, that is where a hydrogen is going to be formed. Now there has to be a functional group because this is just a hydrocarbon chain, kind of boring. So we have to add the acid part. And that's going to come from a carboxyl group. So the stuff in blue, that's a carboxyl. Make that R a little better. Okay. And so as you see here, you have a hydrocarbon chain, but if you add the carboxyl to it, you now have a fatty acid. Okay, glycerol is going to look like this. One, two, three carbons. Those are all hydrogens. And then you're going to have the OH groups because all alcohols have a bunch of OHs in it. Okay. So if you remember from dehydrase and synthesis, what will happen is you're going to use the H from this molecule and then you're going to come up here and you're going to use the OH from there 
you're going to pull out your water and you're going to link the fatty acid to the glycerol, that's just dehydration synthesis. And then when you need to burn some fat or you get on the treadmill, you work out and you, and you burn some calories, um, what's going to happen is that water is going to be put back and then that fatty acid is going to break off that glycerol and you just lost some weight, you know, lost some fat. So that's just a review uh, two podcasts ago when we talked about uh, dehydration synthesis. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about fatty acids. Fatty acids come in two flavors. One, saturated fatty acids, and two, unsaturated. So we're going to talk about the saturated kind first. The key feature of a saturated fatty acid is going to be the single bond between the carbons. Okay, now remember, these are covalent bonds, which means you're sharing electrons. And that little dash right there, they happen to be sharing two electrons. So in this case, it's a single bond. Now when you have this single bond, what happens is you have the maximum amount of hydrogens. And so what we say there is you're saturated with hydrogens. So if we go like this, okay, there's a hydrocarbon chain. Now if you remember from the first episode in this series, every carbon atom can only bond with four things because of its four valence electrons. So what's going to happen here, in fact, I'm going to use a different color for that. Let's try, uh, we'll just go with black. Okay, all, every one of these black ones represents a place where a hydrogen will bond. And as you can see here, we're going to have the maximum number of hydrogens. So this one will be completely saturated with hydrogens. Now one of the things about saturated fatty acids is they tend to be solids in any uh, triglyceride that has a lot of uh, saturated fatty acids in it it's going to become a fat those would be your you know the fat you'd find on a steak or on a piece of chicken or <laughs> yourself you know that kind of stuff so let's show you a picture of this it's a little better than what i'm going to draw okay this is your carboxyl group c o o h this is the one that acts like an acid and then you have this long carbon chain and as you can see here because there's nothing but single bonds in there you are just saturated it's completely covered with hydrogens not a single hydrogen is missing that is a saturated fatty acid it's completely filled with them and that will be a solid at room temperature All right, unsaturated fatty acids unsaturated fatty acids will have at least one double bond in that chain now remember in a double bond write that there you have two covalent bonds which means you're going to share because each covalent bond shares a pair of electrons in this one you're going to share four electrons so two by that top dash two by this bottom dash now because you have a double bond there's not going to be an extra hydrogen here and there's not going to be one there so that you have less than the maximum hydrogens okay. now if you have more than one of these you're going to be poly. Remember, poly means three or more. So you're going to have lots of these carbon to carbon double bonds. Polyunsaturated fats tend to be liquids at room temperature, and those would be your oils. So this would be like vegetable oil, canola oil, uh, peanut oil, etc. Uh, those would be liquids at room temperature, lots and lots of polyunsaturated fats. Okay, on this picture, here is a sample of saturated fatty acids. The, the blue stuff right here, that represents the acid group. So that would be the carboxyl group. The stuff in yellow is the hydrocarbon chain. Okay, I'm going to write this as two words because I ran out of room. All right, that's a hydrocarbon chain. In a saturated fatty acid, because of all the single bonds, they form a pretty much a straight line. And so what they can do is they pack together real tight, nice and dense, and they can become a solid. Now over here, on a unsaturated fatty acid, you have these double bonds. And these double bonds cause the car hydrocarbon chain not to be straight. It gets these little kinks or gets these little bends in it. Well, these little bends keep these fatty acids from basically packing real tight into each other. And so you see all this empty space? that's what makes it a liquid it's less dense so over here these would be a solid because you have lots of saturated fatty acids 
and this one over here, that would be a liquid because you have less of those. So you have mainly, whoops, let's get rid of that. Get that eraser in there. You have lots of unsaturated fatty acids. So solid, very dense, liquid, less dense. Okay, what are the functions of a lipid? There's four of them. If you want to remember, EMCH, EMCH. And some of them are very similar to the ones that you saw for a carbohydrate. Energy storage. Fats are often used to store excess energy, so it's there when the organism has a tough time finding food and it can live off its fat. So we're going to find this mainly as fats in animals. Plants will not use a lipid to store energy very often. They're mainly going to use starch, a type of carbohydrate. Um, lipids are also the main component in a cell membrane. And it's actually a special type of lipid called a phospholipid. Phospholipids look like this. You've got a glycerol molecule. And then you're going to have a couple of fatty acid chains right there. And then sticking out of it is you're going to have a phosphate group. So there's the phosphate part. Here's the lipid part. Uh, we normally draw these a little bit simpler than that. You draw a circle because you have a polar head. You have nonpolar tails. Okay, because the phosphate group is polar. Then obviously the lipid part down here, that's going to be unpolar. And this is a feature that's going to be real important when we study the cell structure in chapter 7. So really what I'm doing, I'm just planting a seed in your head that hopefully it'll be able to grow over this time. It'll be easier for you when you get to that chapter. <clears throat> All right, chemical messengers, which are also known as hormones, they're made in one part of the body and they are go to another and cause something to happen. A lot of your steroids are hormones. So think of like, the male hormone, testosterone. That is that is so misspelled, it's unbelievable. All right, well, I'll, I'll put in a little flag to, to help you spell that one. All right, and then the fourth one is waterproof coverings, and these would be your waxes. You're going to find these on the leaves of trees and other plants, especially in the tropical areas, lots of wax to keep the rain off uh, from basically drowning the leaves. And you're also going to find these on insects for the same reason, to keep water from getting inside their exoskeleton and essentially drowning them. All right, so see all these are on different colors. They're very important. Probably going to be on a test or a quiz for you. So remember, it's energy storage, main component of a cell membrane, chemical messengers, and waterproof coverings. All right. All right. Well, this will conclude this episode and all of our episodes on Chapter 2B on carbohydrates and lipids. So when we get to Chapter 2C, we're going to learn about proteins. Until then, we'll catch you on the flip side.